from Safe Streets Connecticut. And we're here today to encourage our legislators to hold a special session to address the escalating crime wave that is terrorizing Connecticut streets and families. We recognize that COVID is an important public safety concern and it's a public safety concern that individuals have some level of control over. They can wear a mask, they can get a vaccine, but what the other public safety concern that the public doesn't have control over is if they're gonna be the next person who's abducted, person whose house is broken into, person whose car is stolen, or their catalytic converter is stolen, or they're mugged. This is a public safety issue that should not be a partisan issue, and yet somehow it is. What we're doing is we're, we would like every citizen who is, who's been impacted by the escalating crime wave to write to their elected officials to demand action, to, to demand accountability. And we do have some partners in the legislature that are on the Democrat side, and one of them is Jill Berry. So I'm gonna ask Jill to step up and say a few words and, and really um, where, where she's at with encouraging other legislators to um, sign a petition for a special session. Jill? Thank you, John. Um, I am here today to say I support you wholeheartedly, Safe Streets Connecticut. I support law enforcement and I am asking begging my Democratic legislators to call a special session for this reason. Public safety is in danger and we need to do it sooner than later. So please, I ask my de Democratic legislators to call a special session and to address this issue. Thank you. I'm Jill Berry. I'm the state representative for District 31 Glastonbury. Thank you, Jill. I'd like to call on um, Tom Delnicki from uh, uh, South Windsor. Good morning. My name is Tom Delnicki, State Representative, South Windsor, 14th District. And the important thing to remember here is this is not a city problem. This is not a suburban problem. This is not a rural problem. This is a Connecticut problem. And if we can come in as many times as we have to address the executive orders of the governors, then it seems to me it's a common sense thought that we should be able to come in and address the juvenile crime crisis. You need to talk to your local line police officer to find out the impediments that they have when it comes to trying to deal with this issue and how their hands are tied. So I'm glad to see you folks here, and I'm gonna continue lobbying my colleagues to come and sign up and get some action done on this because this issue cannot wait till next year because we've already seen a death, people shot at, people maimed. Where and when will it end? Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I'd like to call on Craig Fishbein. Good morning, I'm Craig Fishbein. I'm the ranking member of the Judiciary Committee. I serve the 90th uh, Legislative District, which is Wallingford and Cheshire. You know, a lot of people say there is no problem, but look at the data. We have looked at the data, and over the last 10 years, the incident of motor vehicle theft throughout our state has, has actually decreased. However, the uh, arrests of juveniles has significantly increased. So in 2010, the arrests of juveniles for stealing a motor vehicle was 21% of those total motor vehicle arrests. Um, as of 2019, so pre-pandemic, that number ballooned to 36%, a 15% increase in that 10-year period. And understanding that you know thefts of motor vehicles very rarely is a, is a one-off, is a very rarely does one steal a motor vehicle and they leave it in their neighbor's driveway or something like that. 
it's, there's always some sort of collateral. There's a, there's a chase because somebody's threatened or something like that. There's other pro uh, property crimes that are related to that. You know, so there's other things that fall from this, and it's very important that we at least get to the table in the Capitol. We're able to talk about what we propose to uh, have done here to at least address that and move forward from there. So thank you, everyone, for coming today. Thank you, Craig. Um, Jason, would you like to um, sure. say a few words? Sure. Thank you. Uh, State Rep. Jason Doucette, uh, representing Manchester and Glastonbury. Um, uh, I'm a Democrat. I'm here this morning because I support these community activists here, many of whom are from Glastonbury, one of the towns I represent. Uh, and I'm here because I would like to see a special session on this issue. Um, but let me be clear, um, we as Democrats and Republicans may not agree on 100 percent of uh, the policy proposals that are out there on this issue. But the work has been done, is being done. Representative Fishbein, others from the leadership of the Judiciary Committee, Democrats and Republicans uh, have been in the room for most of the summer talking about this. I think there is a lot of consensus. I want to help build that consensus. Um, and I would like uh, to see it uh, be done in a special session as, as soon as possible. I think there, there is enough uh, consensus on this issue. Again, we may not agree on 100% of it, but, um, but the time for action uh, is here. And I, I, I think, um, I think we, can, we can get it done. Thank you. So you're not considering the change of things among other their history, their brain development, what struggles they thank, thank you, Jason. And I'd like to call on Kerry Wood. Carrie Wood, State Representative from the 29th District. I want to thank the lobbying effort that Safe Streets Connecticut has been doing to my colleagues and myself. I think as a result of their efforts, we've had a recent policy change where ju uh, juvenile records are now shared amongst the judiciary and law enforcement. I want to thank the governor's office for giving um, my district an extra $35,000 for um, police overtime. Um, and this has gone around Central Connecticut, which is going towards a uh, police task force on car thefts. Um, but we need to do more. We need to address the laws. We need to address the loopholes. Um, we could do this in special session, and I'm looking forward to working with my colleagues on calling for that special session and making changes to the laws that's needed to keep our streets safe. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, Tammy, do you want to say anything? Hi, good morning. I'm State Representative Tammy Nuccio, and I am representing Tallinn, Willington, and Ashford, three small towns um, in the state here who are being heavily impacted by the criminal violence that we're seeing right now. Uh, just on this regular weekend, I've seen multiple posts in all three of my towns having to do with uh, people coming to people's houses and shaking their doors in the middle of the night, rummaging through cars, uh, stealing cars, and just overall criminal activity that's increasing. This is not a bipartisan issue. As you can see by the representatives that are behind you right now, this is bipartisan. This is about the safety of our citizens. Uh, we're elected to represent those voices, and right now we're not, we're not getting that ability. We're seeing some great work from the Judicial um, Department, especially with Representative Fishbein, who is working to really look at how we can accomplish this and truly handle not just the criminal activity, but what we're failing to do, which is helping to redirect these youths. Um, overall, we're failing right now, and that is, it's not our role as legislators. Our role is to come in here to back up, back and forth, come up with good policy, and find a way to make the state of Connecticut better. Um, I'm asking that the legislature come forward and do their job. Let us sit down, let us talk about it, let's find a way to address this issue that helps not only our residents, but the people who are involved. So I'm calling on everybody to please write into your legislature, write into the people who represent you, and ask them to bring your voice forward and ask for a special session. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Um, Pat, um, why don't you come forward? Good morning, everyone. My name is Patrick Callahan. I'm the state representative from the 108th District. I think I have a pretty unique perspective on the situation. I, uh, for almost 30 years, I was a probation officer in the state of Connecticut. I was a chief probation officer for about 20. I was a victim of car theft and a victim of burglary. I know what it's like to be a victim. I know what it's like to work with victims. I know what it's like to work with offenders. 
I know what it's like to try and re rehabilitate people who don't want to be rehabilitated. Also, these juveniles can smell weakness in the system. The weakness in the system it allows them to go out and reoffend, and nothing happens to them. There's no consequences. So for months now, we've been begging for a special session. Well, and during the regular session to address these things. So the, the, the juveniles who are continuing to commit crimes are just getting put back out in the street with no consequences. Let, let, let's let's put some more sanctions in place that that can curb this violence. If you've ever been a victim of uh, someone breaking into your house and seeing a family member crying because your bank accounts have been compromised, your cars have been trashed. I got one of my cars back. It stunk like marijuana. There's Wendy's wrappers all over the place. I have to explain to my kids why someone violated us. Enough. Enough. We can, we can address this. The offenders know when, when there's a weakness and they take advantage of it. Let's take away that weakness and address this in a special session as soon as possible. I appreciate everyone being here, being here today, and I think this could be the uh, cog that gets things going. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Greg Howard. Good morning, everybody. My name is Representative Howard, the ranking member of the Public Safety Committee. By way of background, I've been a police officer for 19 years. I also coach youth football, very involved with a lot of youth. The reality that faces us, like every piece of legislation, specific with this, is that every kid who goes out and commits a crime has a different situation, a different background, a different family environment, a different set of physical and emotional needs. What we need to do is empower our juvenile justice system, which is much more a, 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 a social service system than it is a court, even though we call it a court. It operates as a social service system, and probably rightfully so, because we do want to get all of the kids that are going down the wrong path onto the right path. And to do that, we need to empower our judicial system and the juvenile court system to take each kid on a case-by-case -case basis and not hamstring these highly experienced, highly certified, highly educated, highly trained professionals who work with these kids to get them on the right path. And in doing so, we have to confess that we cannot save every kid. We cannot let perfection be the enemy of great. So we have to understand that in doing so, we can't find the one anomaly who might slip through the cracks and still go down the bad path and say, okay, we can't do this for everybody. We have to be realistic about it. There's a clear public safety risk in our state with juvenile crime and we need juvenile reforms. But keep in mind that the entry ticket to the juvenile system for all of these kids is our police force. And there was a time in Connecticut where you slept secure in your bed at night knowing your car was safe because you had police officers on the street doing their job. The clear message came a year ago, don't do your job anymore. And they're not. Police officers are afraid to do anything. They used to put their lives on the line, now they're being asked to put their livelihoods on the line for every little thing they do. Look at the statistics. Look at the car stops that are down. Look at the proactive activity that's down. You want crime to stop? Put your police back to work. Thank you. Thank you. So that pretty much sums up the scope of the problem. We as Safe Streets Connecticut are here to lobby all legislators today. So we will be, uh, we will be at the uh, legislative office building at the Capitol speaking with um, our elected officials and demanding change. And I want to thank each and every one of you for, uh, for attending. Questions? What questions? Okay. Pretty much everyone that has talked has been a legislator. Mm -hmm. Who are the mem what's the membership of your organization besides uh, legislators? So, so we we are um, as you've noticed, we're not elected officials. We're just average citizens who are fed up with the way the escalating crime wave is impacting us. Um, some of us have had have had their houses broken into. Um, I almost got hit head on um, on June 13th. Uh, that's what got me involved. And we, we've had enough. No one is speaking for the average citizen. We are the voice for the average citizen. The other thing is there's, everyone's talked about it needs to be addressed. Something needs to be done and it has to be, it should be done in a special session. What can be done? What kind of law? What are you looking for that can be done in a special session to help alleviate the problem? So, so um, Craig Fishbein has put together a 
a series of common sense reforms that include accountability, that include intervention services for the young criminals, many of which are repeat offenders. So we're not talking about a teenager who makes one mistake. No, these, these young criminals are quite good at crime. And they realize, as one of the representatives and former police officer has said, is that they are emboldened by not being punished. This, they, they just get stronger and stronger. So what kind of punishment are you suggesting? That, that's not up for me to say. That's up for the legislators. We want, we want open debate. So right now, this, this issue is being ignored. And, and we're, that's why we're here. We, we can't ignore this issue any longer. Kristen, do you want to say anything? Something about a petition. Where can people find that and sign it? Um, there's a there's a petition uh, on our website. Yeah, do you mind just um, there's a peti a petition on our website, safestreetct.com. Okay, and I would just say that um, um, over the summer um, there was a press conference held, and um, the organizers of the press conference talked about. Um, Having our legislators, having our legislators stand up for humanity and recognize that people are people, regardless of who they are and how they ended up in a particular situation, um, they want legislators to stand up for humanity. And I say, what about my humanity? Uh, I'm a person too, no matter what community I live in. So um, it was said that prisons are unhealthy, and we would agree. Uh, that's why we would like juveniles to refrain from criminal behavior so they don't have to face any type of unhealthy um, situation in their future. And it was also said that policing and incarceration does not make us safer. And I would say to that, tell that to the family of Henrik Godelski, who would still be here today were it not were it not for the repeat juvenile offender who had already had 13 offenses under his belt and he was still able to be out on the streets driving a stolen car and running over and killing Mr. Godelski. There's, there's, no, um, there's nothing that will ever bring him back and, there, and there's nothing that legislators can do to fix that except recognize our issue and come out here and tell us they are committed to calling for a special session, that they understand that there are vulnerable populations, elderly people who cannot possibly protect themselves from this scourge of, of crime. We don't wanna see young people locked up forever or have their lives changed in a negative way. We wanna see them have their lives changed in a positive way. But right now they can murder someone and the maximum that they would ever have to uh, endure is 30 months of probation. So that's criminal as far as I'm concerned. Can you identify yourself? I'm Kristen from Safe Streets, Kristen Borbo. Um, K R I S T I N B O U R B E A U. Okay. Do you have any other questions? All right, thank you so much.